Okay. We go ahead and call the meeting to order of the City Board of Directors on September 5th, 2023. That was a board meeting. And uh, in attendance, we have uh, Mary Navas, Christian Bodice, Dr. Roberto Portillo, Michael Jones, uh, which gives us a quorum. Uh, absent is Larry Balabi. And uh, we are waiting to see if Javier Gonzalez shows up. From the staff, we have uh, head of school, Josh Rip, Rosie Infante, and Rachel Headley. Thank you for joining us tonight. That takes us then to uh, public comment. If there's anything anybody would like to share with the board that is not on the agenda, now would be the time to do so. I would like to share something. Please go ahead. Do I stand here? You can come up. Want to, you can sit in front of these seats. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Yolanda Hernandez, and I'm a parent of a Sabre graduate uh, 2020 class. And then I have a ninth grader and an 11th grader, all boys. Um, I'm just here just to, um, I guess, express all the frustration that I have um, with the the school and how it's changed over the years because I've been here since like I was a sixth grader um, and I've seen a lot of changes and I just wanted to, my, I do talk to my kids of uh, things that happen in school and last year one of my students told me that uh, one of their classes, I think it was their English class, that they were rushing through work to get things done because they have a lot of free time and I told them, what do you mean? He said, yeah, because we get to use our phone when we have free time. So one of the school site council meetings or one of the parent leadership meetings, I did express that if we could look into um, shortening our classes and not having a block schedule, because if we're not able to um, to provide a quality education in the 40, in the hour and so minutes of the block, then reduce it and give them the quality education that we need. Because I'm here because I'm an advocate for my children. And if we're a school, a school that's Sending our kids to a through college at Roberta, I think we need to look at what they're learning and if they have enough learning. Um, and I remember in that meeting there was another student and the principal asked him and he expressed that, yeah, there's sometimes a lot of free time in the classes. So I really want, um, and I asked him what it, it takes and he said, well, it could be this year or probably the future year. So I, I really request that we could look into what it's being taught in that time frame. And it, if it's used at 100%. What I'm hearing you say that is that uh, the experience of your children in the classroom was that with the extended block period schedule, they're having too much free time. There's not enough education going on. And um, students are allowed to use their cell phones in class. And what you think would be a good solution would be to reduce the block schedule back to what I believe it used to be 45 minute classes. Either that or making sure we use the whatever block schedule is with the full 100% use of the text and not having kids rush through an assignment and just to use it as a, as a conversation. So you don't see a problem with the length of the period, it's just that the length of the period is not being used effectively. Mm -hmm. And what you want is effective use of the time. So that students are receiving their maximum educational benefit. Correct. Do I have that right? Yes, correct. Okay. I think that's about it that I have. Well, if I can interject, yes. we met earlier. I think you should share each of your. Uh, yes. Okay. I have, I have a list. Okay. Good. Um, I, I, I'm, I told Mr. Rick, I, I have a lot of passion. 
when I first saw the flyer, when my son was a fourth grader, um, and how he's a senior going to college, I really bought in, into the mission statement. Kids going to college, our community, our kids going to college. So that's my passion. And I, I heard about the school that wanted to mimic the college, the collegiate school in Santa Cruz, that that's what the purpose of SIGO was, to mimic it. And over the years, I've seen that we've lost our focus. I feel, that's what I feel, that we've lost the focus. And as a community, as a school, and I don't know how we could bring it back and how the whole purpose of this is to get our kids to it through college. So I told Mr. Ripp that I, I see I see a lot of things that are not, like for example, I told him that I told him in all our meetings, or not all of them, but I expressed in various meetings about the website. And it's not functioning correctly. It's not up to date. Like things like that, that make that book barriers. And I told them we have our our school site councils that are running in English. And 90% of our families are Spanish speaking. So why are they running English and not in Spanish and translated in English for those who do speak English? I think, and then I had asked them like, what are we doing to, to get these kids wanting to go to college? I think we need to hire more of our more colorful, more people like me, more people, I'm not a teacher, but like, you know, Hispanic, other native, you know, we need to hire and so they can see that it's attainable. People like this is attainable. I also asked Mr. Rip, like my I, I wish, you know how um, CBUSD puts those banners on Cabrillo with a sign of where the kids are going for college? We're a college school. Why don't we have banners of all our students that where they where are they going? I asked Mr. Rick, like, I want to see the pictures. So when I walk, like, oh my God, that kid's going to Stanford. Oh, that kid's going to Berkeley. See, you can do it too. I motivate my kids because they see that picture. Whether they go or not, but I think I'm motivating them. And they see that one of their peers or one of their students that came from this community is going to that school. So I think we have to come back and I told them, is your staff 100% buying in into the dream, into the going to and through college? And I think, uh, and I and I and I met Mr. Rip and I told Mr. Rip, and he knows me, Mr. Rip. I I I I tell him a lot of things that I that I see. Like he talked about in the summer about bringing Abbott to the school, and I know Abbott because I was part of Abbott when I was at Ian Hall. And for me, Abbott was advanced via. I still know what it means, advanced via division accommodation. It taught me how my skills of note taking and how to how to read a paragraph and take the most important things and. But we don't do paper and pencil anymore. It's all in computer. So how are we going to convert that and teaching those skills to our skills to our students? And like I told Mr. Rip, my kids might not go to college. I have, I mean, I have one of my kids has an IEP. I'm not saying it's impossible, but he struggles. I know his capability. I want him to graduate from high school and then let's see what it takes him. But my goal for him right now is to graduate from high school. And I told Mr. Rip, every goal, everything that I ask you to do. I'm not only thinking, I'm not being selfish and thinking about my students. I'm thinking about the community as a whole. Why? Because I grew up here, I was born here, and I was raised here. And I want, I want to see our kids going to college. See, and I told Mr. I don't know if you, I have this passion. And I work, I'm involved in my church, and I'm involved in my union. I, I have, I'm a mom. I have three boys. My husband has a business. I do his bookkeeping. I'm, I'm a busy mom. But my the education for my kids is very important. And if I get something for my kids, guess what? Everybody else is gonna benefit from it. We're a college, one of our biggest barriers to sending kids to college is money. There's do we offer scholarships? Full rights? Are we taking advantage of companies? Like what are we doing as a school? So I have a lot of position. I know Mr. Rip and I told him that. I just like I'm, I'm giving it my hundred percent, but sometimes I feel it's straining, and I feel that I'm, I'm drawing my lot with my last strength, and, and I just don't know where to go from here, and, and whether to continue this year. Uh, I'm part of the school site council um, uh, vice president. Yeah. Uh, they wanted me to be president, but I told them that I just so I could get them. You know, because I want you know I want to be their sidekick. 
but I want I want them to advocate for their kids too. I could do it, but I want to give them the opportunity to have that advocacy. But I'll be the next one, you know. And that's about it. I mean, I, I just have a passion. I just think we need to focus on our goals and what what is what is our goal and and see and if every individual here is striving for that goal. Because my kid is in the 11th grade last year, he had a meet key class. This year, I didn't even know they were offering meet key classes. If they told him, he didn't communicate to me. So they're not communicating to me as a parent, like I told Mr. Ritt. Like, I need to know what's going on because if you give my son an option, he's not gonna challenge himself. My son needs to be pushed and I'm gonna be pushing him Unfortunately, my kids still listen to me. I still tell them what to do and they listen. So if I tell them dual enrollment, if I tell them AP class, he's gonna do it. He's not gonna want it, but he's gonna do it because I'm signing him up. You know, and I still have that. But while he's in high school, I'm showing him how we go about. And when he's in college, he has all the tools to succeed. And I could see it in my son, who's already in his, he already has an offer when he graduates. In civil, uh, civil engineering, so I mean, structural engineering at Oregon State, and he just got an offer oh. for 20 graduates. Why? Because he's responsible, he's hardworking, and I was here with him. I was always advocating for him here. And now he's uh, in Oregon, and he, he called me for advice, but he's able to do it on his own. So I want to get these skills to our, to our kids, to our families, teach our families so they could teach. I don't know what you guys could do as a board so we can make this school come back to what it was. Yeah. Let me make sure that I have all your ideas on here. Uh, you talked about the English class and lack of uh, too much time. Um, and then you sort of an overriding concern is that the mission of the school is supposed to be college preparation. And you feel that the school has gotten off of that focus. And you're unsure whether the staff as a whole or to a to an individual is committed to that mission. Uh, you also expressed a concern about the website that it's not being kept current. Information on there is not accurate. And that the site school site council is taking place in English and that the, the discussion or what's shared is not translated or not. It is, it is, it is, but uh People don't feel comfortable when you get the information in English. When the majority is Spanish speaking, why not run the meeting in Spanish and have the translation? That's actually something we did at Alianza, is that when we had a meeting, we should take a survey about who is more comfortable in Spanish, more comfortable in English. And we had um, my favorite translator, whose name I'm blanking on right now. District. She retired. Oh, did she? Yeah. Um, Ava? Ava. Yeah, it yeah, was one. Yeah. Uh, and we did a poll, and whoever, if it was more Spanish speakers, would do the, the meeting in Spanish and then translate in English, or English speakers. Uh, that might be something you want to look at. Uh, but what really made that key, and I'm sure you probably have it here, the microphones, so if you have a translator that translates in the headset. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And then there's the issue about hiring more Latinos, uh, DEI. Uh, I know we talked about diversity concerns uh, at this uh, on the board. Um, and that's a big concern. Um, and you know, I would certainly say that if we have uh, candidates for a position and uh, what I would expect the school to be doing would be to looking at all the factors that would make them a, the best possible choice for the school. And even the Supreme Court is not on the same page with me right now, uh, ethnicity and the ability of the uh, candidate to uh, be seen as a model for the local population would certainly be a priority for me. Uh, the idea of uh, banners for grads in their colleges that they're going to. Uh, and then the avid classes, I know we talked about avid classes before. We, I, we had a conversation about that. Uh, 
presented it last month. So we have Avid in 11th grade this year, and uh, we'll be rolling out it in more grade levels next year. And scholarships for students. Um, that's certainly worth talking about to see uh, what avenues we can pursue there. Opportunities um, in that area. And the fact that uh, there are AP classes here, but we feel that uh, parents are not informed about all the AP offerings. I have been told in previous that I've expressed that I want to be aware, like parents to be aware, not just myself. And they said that they put it on the students. And it's just so that we're trying to make students uh, be responsible. And I understand that. I'm all for it. But like I said, if you put kids to do something, they better not do. And there's a minimal amount of students that really have a passion to. I, I see it more. I think my generation or the first generations, you have more, you're more hungry and you want to succeed. You want to be the best because of your background and where you come, you see your parents struggle. But like my kids, like I'm not working in the fields, you know, my husband, you know, we have a different type of job. So their struggles are not my struggles. I speak English, my parents don't speak English. So their hunger is a little bit less. So my responsibility as a parent is to push them, to see that they're not gonna, it's not gonna be free. So you have to work for it. But if I don't push them, if I'm not aware of what's out there for them, how am I gonna push them? Because they're letting, letting the student make that choice. But they're still under age, under my supervision, and I want to push them. And that communication is not going to. Yeah. Uh, did I record the ideas that you were? That's it. Exactly. And I don't know if Bruce discussed something else that I didn't mention. Right. I know. I think you hit every one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when we talked about Abbott in the summer, I did tell him that I really wanted Abbott to be done at the middle school because that's when I took Abbott in the middle school. I just finished my IEP um, conference. And we were talking to uh, uh, the ILP with the IEP teacher and he, uh, direct study teacher, and he said that my son needed study skills and note taking and this. And I'm like, you're asking him to do something that he probably doesn't even know how to do because we do everything on computer. We rely on, on, on apps to teach our students. So how is my student going to learn? Because I tell my kids, how do you study? I remember doing flashcards writing the word definition but I can test myself because my parents didn't speak English. So I tested myself. So I don't see them doing that. So how are they going to get those skills? So that's a thing that Abbott taught me when I was in, in middle school and I worked preparing kids to be successful. Then I think Abbott should start at the middle school. Thank you very much. You came up with a lot of good uh, ideas here and we uh, we'll discuss this with uh, Mr. Rip at the uh, school, and um, the uh, in the near future we'll have information that we can share with you about uh, the plans or things changes that we will make to address the concerns that you expressed. Yeah, and like I told Mr. Rip, I'm here to work with him. Like I like, I mean, I'm here in the news, and I'm here because I believe in them. See, so when I express something, it's because I want it for the benefit of the. Community. So that's that's what I want to see in this school. So that's why we came to this school. Okay. Yeah. Like well, uh, that's great, and uh, the school is very fortunate to have parents such as yourself that you want to get involved and advocate for the important things that uh, she tried to support with children and the other students. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. So, a couple comments. I was going to suggest, um, I think we only have Mary Knox here in time, so maybe we do the, uh, um, put the reports after the one approval item that I have when we approve the agenda. Uh, what about the closed session? We'll do the, we, I think we'll have time for the closed session. I, think, I believe Ms. Novice is here until 6.15. Yes. So we can get through both of those. So you want to do the consent agenda? Um, I think we keep it the same. I just am going to suggest that we put the reports at the end of the agenda. Great. So uh, that happens to be the next uh, item on here is the approval of the agenda. So uh, I'd like to move uh, for approval of the agenda with the change that the report section goes to the end of the meeting. I have a motion. So moved. 
motion is second from uh, Dr. Portillo and Mary Nava. So uh, all those in favor of the agenda say aye. Aye. Uh, Mary, did you approve? Yes, I did. Michael Cruz, Gerson, do you approve? Yes. And Dr. Portillo? Yes. Uh, everybody approves, unanimous. Agenda approved. So for clarification, who was the first, Dr. Portillo and Mary second? Or? Correct. They were almost on okay. the table. Yeah. So. yeah. That takes us to closed session. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to go to closed session. Okay.
Okay, the board is, uh, are we ready to go? Yeah, I think Mary's going to still join, but she'll make her way back on. Let's wait till she's joined. Oh, it looks like we have a new guest, too. So, Dr. Is he uh, on board now? Dr. Mansfield? Yeah. Um, just here. Oh, he's minutes. present. Yes, he joined at roughly Yeah, he's present now. So I'd like the uh, to, to reflect the fact that the Dr. Mansfield has uh, joined our meeting. So welcome, Dr. Mansfield. All right, we're now going to have the report out from closed session, and we'll share that. Um, board just approved an expulsion. Board revoked the suspended enforcement of the stipulated expulsion order regarding confidential student discipline matter. Order number 08222023. Student is expelled from SELA until June 13th. June 13th? 2024. June 13th, 2024. The board voted unanimously, four to zero, with four voting aye and zero voting nay to revoke the suspended. Expulsion. That concludes the business from the closed session. We'll now go on to the consent agenda. Now, I will note that uh, when we approved the agenda, the reports section was put to the end of the meeting. Any questions about the consent agenda? No. All right, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Dr. Portillo. Motions and Gershom seconds. Uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Michael votes aye. Gershom, how do you vote? Aye. And Dr. Portillo? Aye. Uh, the motion passes 4 to 0. Okay, that takes us forward to. Action items. And we have a J13A. Yeah, so last Wednesday, August 30th, 
we had an issue um, where the electricity had gone out in Watsonville. Um, and we were found out about it at 7.30. I think it went out about 7.02. And uh, about 8 o'clock, uh, we made the decision to uh, close the school for the day because it would not be safe for students to be on campus without light. And uh, as a result of that, we did not get ADA for that day. And so I'm requesting that the board approve a, a J13A, um, which is a waiver for attendance for Wednesday, August 30th. Hey, any questions? Um, um, I'm just curious, uh, Josh, how long, do you know how long the electricity was out for? Mm. It came back on around 11. Okay. Out long enough that we have battery yeah. backups for our internet and our cards and that the battery yeah. was as well. well. Okay. We also made the call thinking it was going to turn back on at 2.30 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mother, you had a question? I just a comment regarding that day. Uh -huh. Um, I live in Pluto, so I got the I got the message around at uh, that time. Um, there was conflicting information given to us parents. Um, luckily my my cousin was in position; she was able to take my kids back home. I was told at the stop sign that the kids had to connect through Zoom. Um, that the teachers were going to be going home and logging in through Zoom and having classes. So I directed my students that they better go in and connect through zoom because that's what it was going to be then there's there's a post on parent square saying that there's no classes um it was just the information given out was in different directions um but then i guess a text message was sent out that um assignments were going to be posted so there was no zoom the assignments were going to be posted but then uh, Coming back from COVID and having all these Zoom and uh, learning new, a new way to communicate and have classes, why wasn't Zoom used? Because my kids, they did the assignments, but I don't, think, I don't think they got the quality, the education. When we have Zoom available, why not use it to our full? Hmm. Yeah. Mr. Ruth, do you have a response? I can respond. Okay. Um, I mean, being here, our internet dropped out. I tried to film at Parent Square earlier at like before eight o'clock and I couldn't because our internet stopped working. And that most like most of my teaching staff was already here. So they, they didn't have internet either to work. Um, so a lot of them were doing hotspot just trying to change their assignment to be online. Um, and then I was worried about like again, students who are at home, connectivity errors. Um, not being able to do that, but if they weren't getting that in-person instruction, how are they going to get that, you know, make up for that? Um, so I, I made the call to tell everyone to do it online and try to have it, like, so that the students, whoever, like, if they had to go to the library and they didn't have headphones, that they could still do it without having to get to Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of teachers asked if they could offer Zoom hours, which I was like, of course, you know, they needed time to drive home and then do that. So I know a couple of teachers had that option. Um, so that was more of an optional for the teachers to do. So moving forward, I mean, this is random. Like, yeah, it's probably, totally, yeah. yeah. Like, would it be, if now that you went through this, would there be like something now done in case it happens again or they're not lost like at least have some i don't know maybe being able why you need electricity not maybe have a half day and actually have something to do with a person mm -hmm. you know because you, you're leaving kids and then parents are at work i mean our community you know our community, we're not eight to five we're like more like six or five o'clock in the morning to six at night so they're probably not getting that text until they're at work so yeah. just keep being be mindful of that though and how Mm -hmm. How I mean again, all for the education. Mm -hmm. Like how are we gonna give the hundred percent? I know it's random that this happened, yeah. but I was kind of a little frustrated that I got missed different information. Yeah, and absolutely. yeah, at the stop. Um, yeah, I went back square. outside. You're like, no, that's not. Yeah, that's not what I told you. So yeah, I was clear with them to make sure to not mm -hmm. do that anymore because we did have parents. I called in afterwards asking, so I went back outside to tell them again very clearly that it's on school as we check through. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So the kids were telling me, there's nothing, there's nothing on Zoom, I'm trying to connect, there's nothing, I'm like, well, that's what they said. Then I get that text to say that it's all posted on. Yeah. So just. Keep so there was uh, no electricity, so there was no internet con connectivity. 
the internet so we do have a backup but it dropped out really fast i don't know so like i was using my personal hotspot trying to get stuff to connect but like i said i tried to send a parent square at like it was before eight o'clock and i thought i had sent it and then i went outside and then like it just never sent because i didn't realize i had lost the internet in between that time do we have a battery backup for we do we do and why didn't it perform as you would have liked Mm, TBD. I'm not sure exactly because it did turn on after that. Back, yeah. um, it, it was it was like spotty too before. I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was spotty with some devices. Mine was the same type until about maybe or so when I think everyone started going no as far as power goes. And then, and then, then I had to use my hotspot, but I was able to work on the regular Wi-Fi for a good chunk of the morning. Huh. So, we have plans to investigate that and find out if it would happen again. What we can expect. Mm, we don't have set plans currently about we all go to Zoom. Uh, I think we can work on developing plans for that. I think one obstacle would be like, let's say it happened in a similar circumstance to what happened on Wednesday. Um, so now we have teachers here because they got to school at say 7.45 or eight, but now they don't have internet. So how are they gonna run their classes over Zoom? So I think that's the one obstacle that we'd, we'd encounter. But I think what we could do maybe is have just a fail safe. If we're not here in school, here's your Zoom, click on it. And you can always find me here at these intervals and at these times. Um, and we can make sure that each teacher has their own individual Zoom and that can just be permanently parked on um, Schoology. I, the only issue I'd see with that is if like, if we would have had that prior to this time, I think some teachers would have been able to perform and be there on Zoom, but I think it had been spotty. So, oh, my first block teacher didn't co show up and maybe not because they weren't trying, but they had no internet access. So then what would that lead to? So I think those are just some issues I and Yeah, I see sort of two two parts. One is the instruction and mm -hmm. optimally we'd have Zoom and we could go to that. But before that even is do we have connectivity to the internet so that, and I don't know how we do it, but you know, that we'd be able to put information onto the web page uh, and have a protocol in place so parents know that, oh, something's not happening. Um, and then uh, some kind of list uh, I'm sure you have some kind of email list service, right? That's what she was referring to with Parent Square. So Parent Square is our, yeah, it sends out texts and emails to our community. So that, that did work. It just went out later than we would have ideally liked. That was the, because of the batteries problem. Uh, it sounds like it, yes. Okay. So we can investigate that and maybe get back to parents and say, in the event that uh, a one-off event like this happens again, this is what the protocol is. Yeah. Yes. Right. All right. So that takes care. We. I don't think we approved. We didn't approve it. Yeah. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the application for the J13A? I move approval. Okay. Mary was primary, uh, made the motion, Gershom seconded. Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Michael votes aye. Gershom? Aye. And Dr. Portillo? Aye. Uh, unanimous vote, 4 0 to approve the J13A. And that brings us to uh, closing items. Mary, is there anything you want to uh, add to uh, the next uh, board meeting? Um, I'm just curious when are the unaudited actuals coming? They were going to come this month. Ken requested to have them come in October. And the county office is okay with that? There is no, yes, we checked in with them prior to. Okay. Okay, doc. That was just my question. Mm -hmm. In our meeting today, he said we have the draft ready for next week. Okay. So I'll send you the draft once I receive it and we'll agendize it uh, for the October board meeting. Okay. Thank you. And Josh, what I'd like to do is set up a time maybe where the two of us can talk about some of the concerns that Imelda brought up okay. and see what uh, we can sort of come up with a plan about how to address them. Okay. 
those that those that we have a quick solution for and those that might take uh, a longer to figure out. Sure. And so um, anything we can act on in the next meeting, we can add, add to that agenda. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Take care, you guys. All right. Uh, all right. And now we'll go back to reports. Okay. I have a school report. So I have a shorter one today since we went over test uh, results last month. Um, but I just wanted to bring something, and this will come up um, when we do our uh, monthly update, but um, or in October when we go over on our actuals. But uh, we, in the 23-24 budget, we anticipated that we would have an enrollment of 525 with an ADA of 488. And the first day of school, we were at 549, and we are currently at 512 students. And our ADA through Friday is at 485, and that's assuming that the J13A waiver is approved. And so I wanted to bring this to the board's attention um, so that we can begin to talk about how we can overcome some of this obstacle that we're encountering here. We What's going on with uh, losing 37 students. We enrolled more than we typically do, knowing that kids always are going to move out, especially in the high school levels. Uh, but they left at even a higher rate at that high school level, so we saw a bigger drop off. Uh, any commonality in why they were leaving? Uh, varied. Um, some for sports, some for um, a variety of reasons, social emotional concerns. It wasn't even all too traditional high schools. A lot of times it'd be to alternative high schools and whatnot. Have you so, ever seen a drop off like that before? Uh, yeah, we always see it. I don't think I've ever put up like what the actual enrollment is on the first day and compared it to it. But I thought we'd have, would we guessed it, we thought we'd end up with 525 with that number because we've usually gone 535 and we end up with about 520 by this time of year. We went more and we still ended up with a few less. So, um, that was obviously a little bit frustrating. So we're we going to the wait list to draw from that to get back up to 525? I think that's what we're going to have to do to uh, um, overcome. Well, yes. Yeah. So that is my report for this month. That's the whole report? That's the whole report. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Rip? Well, sounds like another challenge. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pebley, do you have any comments? No, I mean, just thinking like even today's situation, we're having a hard time with new students coming in at different grade levels. Um, so just like concern about, of course, you know, budget and actual like people will come but also concern about bringing in yet more students to our school and the culture and making sure that they fit in and making sure that they have a smoother transition at maybe the start of the school year. Better to do that at the beginning of the school year than trying to do it in the middle of the school year. Yeah, but right. I think, again, like making sure that we have a more concrete plan of like student pairings and buddies, if we could do it now on a lower scale, then it'll be easier to do next summer. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know, just knowing some of the students who left, like, adjusting to new school is hard. And I, I, yeah, I think we could have done more. Are the schools, the 37 school students who left, uh, how many of them were longtime students, say, had been here since sixth grade, and how many had come here, say, just for high school, or new to high school? Mm. I, I feel like I'm going to give you, I can give you an exact breakdown of what those demographics are. What I can tell you, though, is last year and the students that we enrolled in the middle of the school year, um, probably over 75% of them did not end up staying uh, the entire school year. Mm -hmm. um, so it is these mid-year enrollees that we struggle to support. And so I think that's something that we're going to have to really uh, take a close look at in uh, bringing on new students to save uh, if we do this um, this quarter. Yeah, I'd see that's probably the biggest challenge that SEBA has is how do you um, get students to uh, uh, 
participate in a college prep curriculum um, that which requires a higher level of, of commitment and focus and work um, when they're operating in a market that has a lot of different alternatives. And uh, so it's so, the academic rigor, rigor that they're struggling with. Or is it social emotional? Social emotional um, and just adjusting to a new school. Bringing social emotional challenges and issues um, and then having to adjust to this new school has been a challenge for a lot of the students, especially at this kind of seventh, eighth, ninth grade level. Yeah. Anything else? Rosie, do you have any uh, comments? Um, in regards to the, pretty much the same, you know, they, they come hoping for something different, but then it's the parents, I speak to them when they come and buy their uniforms, hmm. um, but the kids, once they're here, it is, it's, it's harder for them to get adjusted. And especially when kids have already been here since sixth grade and you bring a kid in, in eighth grade, all the kids have already been together for three years, you know, two at least, and um, they don't adjust very well. Some of them do if they already have friends here that they had maybe in elementary, but when they, they don't know anyone, it's difficult for them to, um, to just uh, not fit. Well, yeah, fit in. They, they, they feel like the outcast, even though they don't want to, but it's the first few days, you can see how they struggle. You see them alone and sometimes they don't want to talk. I see them outside in there, but then others do make friends, but they're perhaps not the friends that you would want them to have. So yeah, that's just, uh, it's, it's the whole part of getting used to a new environment. And it might be that the students have a homeroom here at uh, Saba. Mm -hmm. I know we struggled with the same thing at uh, Alianza when I was there. Um, you know, kids who started in kindergarten when you know students showed up in sixth grade for like the middle school years, it was always very, very difficult. Mm. Um, because you had a bunch of kids who were, you know, sort of like a, one big family, and and uh, you don't like to see it, but you know there it happened too often that the newcomer was seen as someone that uh, was, you know, not to be welcomed. It, uh, mm. it was uh, very difficult. Well, sometimes it isn't even necessarily that. It, it's um. Josh and I spoke about this very briefly. And if if it's in the, let's say eighth grade, for example, or in their last year of middle school, and a family has been applying to come into Seda and they just haven't been able to get in, their child's already accustomed at the other school. Sometimes they may have issues or they have been going through some social emotional issues in their previous school. They're hoping that at Seba, because it's a smaller school, they'll be able to control it a little bit more, that the, the, the student will have more um, personal attention. It, yes. And then, and even though they do, the student already has baggage that they're dragging with them. So they come here and there's, you know, they, they don't let go of it. They're, they still got it. And unfortunately, sometimes it just, um, it spreads into the other students, and then you have issues. Issues, yep. Mm -hmm. Very true. Uh, Imelda, any last comments from you? Well, I would be interested to see at what grade levels they actually left. I think that's something that would interest me. Was it a high school level, middle school? Um, I know right now society, I talk to the students, that's another point that I, are, are it's very difficult for teenage, Teenagers right now, 
I told him mm -hmm. that I'm part of a, a church group and we just went over an encounter with eight to 12 year olds. And you would think there's a moment where they really have a connection and you think eight to 12, what problems could eight to 12 year olds have, right? And we had to cut it short because it was intense. We couldn't, we wouldn't be able to handle it. It was 30, 34 boys and girls and we were a team of 20 something. Uh, kid, teenagers and adults because my kids participated as as helpers and and I told Mr. Rip we are living right now in a very difficult time and it's unfortunate that we kids have issues because they have it in their family and I think the problem is bringing in the family and talking to the family of what the school is requiring because they're, they're coming in with the wrong idea it's safer school. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, they wear uniforms. There's no fights. There's no gangs or whatever. They, they come with this image. But this is, we are set up because we want our kids to go to college. Are you, is this your goal? Is your strip club? Then this school is for you. And I think that's where we have to really select and let them know what is our goal. Because this is what Seba is. Right? And I think that's I think maybe that's why a lot of kids are, are leaving. And then kids want to go to an open campus. If it was a high school, I don't know if it was a high number of high school students, but they want to go to an open campus, right. traditional school, more sports, more ROP classes, you know, things to offer. So it's it's difficult having a charter, small charter school with limited access to sports and stuff. But we're doing the best. I mean, I know uh, yearly they've added more sports and made it accessible, but one thing that I said, my kids, when I when I came to SEPA, I knew there was in sports. So for a community to be requesting sports, yeah, if it's able to, if it's doable, it's doable. But remember, we're here because we want to get our kids to and through college. And we don't have the, the facilities to provide you with sports. So knowing this, do you want to come to this? Yeah, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's, this is my parent Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. so thank you again for being here tonight. Um, I think I'm going to make it um, make it a habit of coming to every meeting. Like good. I said, I am busy, but education, like I said, it's not only my kids, it's the community. Yeah, and on the school site council, um, that's a very important uh, function of the school, especially uh, with the changes that were made towards the end of my career with the onslaught, or the, not the onslaught, the entry of um, what they call the LCPP. LCAP. 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 Yeah. Um, that process um, is very important in, you know, the more robust the involvement of the parent group is in that process means that the, what emerges as the product is that much better for the school. And uh, it's working against that is the fact that it's uh, bureaucrat bureaucratic and you know takes a lot of time and energy and trying to figure out. Um, but um, you know, the more uh, input and participation makes it a better product. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? For motion. my report, oh. no motion. Uh, motion to. Uh, oh no, we have one more report. Yeah. Oh, we do. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why it was a long page. All right. Across the country, talking about sports. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of an update. Uh, so our cross country team, we started um, early August um, and middle school will start hopefully next week, I'm trying to get off the ground. But right now I just have high school. Um, so we have two varsity teams. The first time ever in Sabo's history to field two teams. Um, it was pretty fun. This was from our meet last week. And I had several coaches come up to me and be like, wow, like, I can't believe you have this many kids. Most schools are struggling to have, like, any kids on the team at all. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty fun. Uh, right now we have uh, 13 kids running. If you want to scroll, 
And a little little bit, like, so we have seven girls, so it's a full team. We run the top five scores are what actually counts for their team scores. Um, so two are kind of like the substitutes, the alternates, but they're part of the varsity team. Um, and I have three new runners this year, and this is just from our, our course in Santa Cruz this last week. Um, so, again, I have three new runners. Um, yeah. And then the boys team, which was a huge transition, uh, we have six boys, five of them are new to cross country. Um, so it's really exciting for them. This is kind of like their first round. Most of them are freshman boys. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty big change in the dynamic of the team <laughs> where I would say usually a little bit more reserved and <laughs> behaved. Uh, but they had, real, they had a lot of fun. Um, so it was good. Our first meet was a little short. It was like 2.25 miles instead of the traditional three mile loop. Um, so it was kind of, it was a, the jamboree, so our little preseason race. Um, and then I, lastly, I have our schedule for the season. Um, so we were at Wilder Ranch, which was really fun to show them. Um, if you've been to Wilder Ranch, it goes from the coast up to kind of UCSC. It connects. Um, so we didn't run that crazy mountain hill, which oh, no. was nice. Because <laughs> I've been out there mountain biking a lot. I was like, I hope our kids aren't running that. Uh, but what they got to do, it was a really cool trail. Um, it was like a mile of coastal views. Um, so the mm. kids were like, it was so beautiful um, and cooler than it was here that day, luckily. Yeah. Uh, but then the rest of our meets, Apollo Corona um, next Wednesday, and then Toro Park is every other Wednesday, essentially, for the rest of the schedule. And then Pinnacle Lake, um, I'm going to try to get more uh, save us Spartans to go to the Pinnacle Lake. I mean, it's super close. We're there for a lot of different things, um, but it'd be fun to get a little bit more um, raw rock for our kids. It'll also be our senior night um, that day. And then lastly, we have the PCAL Championships, which if you participated in two of the center meets, and those are the regular league meets, um, you qualify for the championships. And then if you placed in the PCAL Championships, we'll move on to CCS. Last year, we had Anthony Therese move on as an individual, um, but we did have a couple girls. Our girls team won PCAL, um, but they didn't qualify for their times. Um, so they need to be a little bit more competitive this year based on their mileage. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to a really fun year and hopefully we get more of those freshman boys into CCS with Anthony. They do have like a really strong boys team coming. It's really fun. And that's my update. Thank you. Yeah. Exciting. All right. That concludes our reports. I think we are done with the agenda now. We are. I have a motion to uh, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Dr. Pictio motions to adjourn. Jersey seconds. seconds. We can't even vote. Yeah. So, never mind. No. <laughs> we don't have a quorum. <laughs> we don't have a quorum. But thank you. 628. Go ahead and turn the meeting anyway.